Match number 40 pits two undefeated sides against each other, both of whom have successfully averted the pitfalls of the group of death to secure their passage to the Super 8s. West Indies versus Afghanistan in St. Lucia is the last group stage game of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2024. We build up to it on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents the SPN Chicken for Time Out, powered by Dish TV Watcher in the company of Ian Bishop. Bish, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure having you with us. West Indies and Afghanistan have successfully got New Zealand out, which doesn't happen too often at World Cups, and they are through to the Super 8s. Not a lot riding on this game, but an ideal test for both these teams heading into the business stretch of this competition. Yes, yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, a number of narratives at play in that um, it's the final game before both the teams go into the Super 8. And you can look at several factors that Afghanistan's batting, which has been very reliant on the opening batters, they would want to find out further if some of the middle order, although Rashid Khan says they're in form, if they can have some time out in the middle, both teams will want to win to keep their confidence going. And it also depends on whether guys like Alzari Joseph and stuff, uh, whether guys need rest or whether you want to see new faces. So a number of narratives and there's no one way of approaching it. Lots of key battles within this. The obvious one is the Afghanistan spinners against West Indies power hitters. Uh, how big a say do you expect that to have with Rashid and Noor lining up against the likes of Puran and Powell? It's obviously going to be an entertaining aspect of the contest. Um, Rashid and Noor and those guys are, are obviously world class, particularly Rashid and I rate Noor Ahmed highly, how the West Indies batters and particularly the guys who have specific roles. And you mentioned Nicholas Purande as one example of a guy who will have a specific role of either taking down or negotiating that spin rust and chase, then also can come into play so that's one half of it and i know we're going to get into the other half of it that afghanistan are not just uh, a one-trick pony as far as their bowling is concerned absolutely you've teed me up there because fazalak faruqi has been on fire 12 wickets uh, telling displays in each of afghanistan's three outings and you've also seen in west indies last outing that trent bowl did trouble them so faruqi against the west indian top order another mouth-watering matchup I would think that from the guys that I've seen, the left arm seamers around the park today, I know Mitchell Stark is an all time great, uh, but in terms of the variety of skill set, the guy who can swing it, genuinely swing it in both directions, I would think I'm, I'm struggling to find another one who can compete with Fazal Haq Faruqi on that level. I'm not talking about numbers. Uh, I'm not talking about history. I'm talking about someone who swings it each way. And Fazal Haq Faruqi, to me, I know Trent Bolt has that cutter, that three-quarter ball. I'm talking about genuine seam upright swinging the ball. Fazal Haq Faruqi is right up there on that list. So, yes, the left-arm seamer is worth his price in gold. West Indies are going to have to negotiate that wonderful Nabi Nul Haq is there as well or mazai if he plays is another one who is skillful um and the west indies have some questions to answer themselves with their batting which i neglected to see um they've had some kind of low scores has done some wonderful work with shofane rutherford for them so some other batters in that west indies lineup have to come through so, would you want uh, West Indies to try some of their bench strength? Would you want some game time for someone like a Hetmeyer or a Hope uh, as far as batting options go? And even the two Pacers were on the bench, Obed McCoy and Shamar Joseph? Yeah, look, it depends on how Darren Sami and Rafan Powell see it. Alzari's been playing a lot of cricket. Uh, he was outstanding in that game against New Zealand. He bowled as well as I've ever seen him bowl in this format in that particular game. So if he has any niggles or anything like that, or if he deserves a rest and that's a discussion they will have to have, they could give him a break. He might just say, look, my rhythm is good. I just want to keep playing. It would be nice though, not necessarily for me, Shamar Joseph, but it would be nice if Obed McCoy as a left arm seamer who is ahead of Shamar Joseph, having played against South Africa in the previous series, that's Obed McCoy. If he gets a run and you can find out if necessary, um, if he could come into the tournament at some stage and someone like a, a Hetmeyer or more so Shea Hope, 
um, if you're looking at Johnson Charles, if Charles doesn't fire sooner rather than later, you want to have another option there with game time just in case that happens. Final question, Bish, on the evidence of what you've seen in this group so far, who to you are the favourites going into this one? And what sort of effect will the result of a game like this have on the morale of the teams going into the Super 8? Yeah, favourites. Um, I would say, I, I wouldn't go with who the favourites, because Afghanistan have had the better of the record between the teams in recent years. Um, but I would think that both teams have work to do with their batting, Afghanistan very reliant on their top two so far in the tournament. Um, I, I would think being at home, the East, I would say they have the edge. It's not a big edge, but I would think the West Indies have the edge in my mind, not in other people's mind, in my own mind, um, the way they've been bowling, if they play the same lineup that played against New Zealand. Um, moral boosting, yes, because you have to look at it this way. Would you rather lose? Would, would losing have a neg more negative impact? Then winning, I think definitely if you go down in this game, you might be asking yourself one or two questions going into the Super 8. So you want to win, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. So preferentially, of course, for anyone, you want to be the victor in this contest. All right, let's see who does end up victorious and finish top of the group, although that will have no bearing. West Indies and Afghanistan both already know where they'll be placed in the Super 8. Thank you so much, Ian Bishop, for setting up the game for us. Introducing the epic new Swift. Time to go swifting. Watch your app. Dekho ek OTT ke dam pe sare OTT shans. Watch your.